I want to welcome everyone uh, to the Encompass monthly member spotlight series that we're starting. Uh, and this is our first one. And today we welcome Clark Peterson, who is the chairman of the Cloud Communications Alliance. And we're looking forward to a conversation with him today. The, the Cloud Computing, the Cloud Communications Alliance is a peer association dedicated to the growth of the cloud industry. They provide a forum to industry leaders to discuss key topics and advance their mutual or individual goals. In the process, CCA moves the industry forward by supporting and educating business, businesses on the best way to build, sell, scale uh, their enterprise communication systems. Clark has, has served as chairman for 11 years. It's, it's hard to believe uh, 11 years in, uh, in your leadership uh, position. He is also currently the CEO of Ontologics Data, a leading platform, a company that analyzes worldwide patents and IP data to predict emerging technologies. He also serves on uh, a couple key boards, TPX Communications and Alonzo. During his career, Clark has built national and global businesses in the software, wireline, wireless, cloud industry, industries, and was part of three successful IPOs. An industry veteran, he previously was an executive at Vonage, served as CEO of Telesphere, and held management roles at Clearwire, XO Communications, and AT&T. Earlier this year, CCAA became an affiliate member of Encompass. This is a special membership we offer to qualified organizations to work with us to advance competition policy. I'm looking forward to the conversation that we're gonna to have today as we talk about this special relationship, the new affiliate membership, and the ways that we work together to advance competition policy, partnerships among our member companies on the business front, our policy summit and our, our annual industry show that this year is going to be in Las Vegas and we're looking forward to being in person this fall for that. So Clark, welcome. I wanna thank you for being part of our initial uh, membership uh, spotlight series. And I'd like to uh, kind of kick things off for you to just tell us broadly uh, who, uh, who you are and what makes up the Cloud Communications Alliance, your member companies, and what y'all uh, try to do to to advance your members and your industry. Okay. Well, thanks, Chip. It's great to be here. Thanks for the invitation to uh, to speak to Encompass members. And on behalf of the Cloud Communications Alliance, or what we'll refer to as the CCA for simplicity, we're really excited to be uh, involved with, Encomp with Encompass on multiple fronts there and on the regulatory side, pushing key initiatives that we think are real important to to your members, to our members, to the overall advancement of the industry. We're uh, really excited to, to, uh, to be with uh, you with some of these initiatives. And so thanks for having me here. Um, I'll, I'll just briefly uh, touch on, you know, the CCA uh, as a mission, you know, uh, our, our mission is to pro provide strategic direction, growth opportunities, and uh, be a thought leader really for the overall cloud communications industry and uh, really represent our vendors our uh, service providers, and we do a lot of work with the analysts who are covering the industry to, to help them understand uh, where things are going and, uh, and answer questions for them. We actually do an annual survey that gives insight to all the analysts, investment bankers from the service providers on, uh, on where things are going, what their customers are asking for, their growth rates. A lot of things that companies are sometimes reluctant to answer specifically for themselves because of uh, they can't be anonymous, but as a uh, as a membership, we're able to provide some really interesting insight uh, for the industry from our, our members, both providers and vendors. Tell, tell us a little bit about what, what would be a key different, differentiator for your organization and, and its mission. Uh, and uh, you, you elaborated some uh, in your initial, but, but talk to us, what makes you distinct and what makes you unique in your space? You know, kind of hit it from, you know, from the perspective of a, of a potential member or current member, you know, what, why do people join the, the CCA? What, what makes us unique? What, uh, what can you do as a member of the CCA that you may not find elsewhere? And, 
and we do focus on the cloud communications um, space, you know, that industry there. And so uh, I know oh, there's a lot of industries for different uh, or different alliances for different industries, but that really is our focus is, is cloud communications. And I think what we do, and I think you alluded to Chip, uh, you know, your meeting in the fall in Las Vegas in person, we also, uh, you know, we're meeting a lot before COVID. We've, uh, we've learned how to do it all virtually in between here, but we're excited to also uh, have our meeting in, uh, we're gonna be on the East Coast there in October. And so we, uh, we're looking to get back in uh, meeting in person, but at those meetings and the, whether they're virtual or in person, really are, we have different components of those meetings and they, they really are differentiators. We have a best practices share, sharing session where, where members are able to share really what's what's working for them and what's not. Things that we can share without sharing, you know, price or anything confidential, but sharing just to, you know, kind of ways to best navigate the industry and be able to best take care of our customers, best keep customers happy. Uh, we share those best practices. Uh, another big benefit of the CCA, we're really the voice for the industry that we focus on for the analysts uh, in particular. And so a lot of companies who may otherwise on their own not have as big a voice to be able to even be on the radar screen of an analyst uh, through the CCA, they're, you know, they want to get their feedback. They have a voice, they're able to give them their perspective. Uh, we're also the voice for all the vendors. So, you know, in the initial days, some of these platforms like uh, back in the day, you know, you had Broadsoft as kind of one of the major cloud communications platforms. I mean, they really didn't want to have to hear feedback from 50 different service providers, right? And so they really liked having the Cloud Communications Alliance be a unified voice for input of things they might want to focus their R&D on to be able to best take care of our customers and uh, us as service providers. And then lastly, uh, you know, the uh, on the M&A side, it's been really interesting, really wasn't one of our things we set out to do, but through all of the networking that we do and all of the, and a lot of our meetings, we have the leading investment bankers and financial institutions speak as far as where the industry is going and uh, what they might want to think about if they're positioning their, positioning their company to either acquire or be acquired. Um, a lot of deals have happened because uh, companies meet other companies who are complementary and synergistic and, uh, and they learn about at the CCA meetings kind of ways they might want to create a one plus one equals three combination with other partners that they meet through our, our events. So um, as you talk about uh, your organization's networking and best sharing of best practices and, and the knowledge and the, and the networking, it's very much uh, consistent with the culture and the mission of, of Encompass. And wherever we can expand the networking, the ability to, to, to form partnerships, business relationships, uh, the merger and acquisition opportunities that, that are only growing and, and for, especially for, for, for cloud-based you know, businesses and, and platforms. Talk to us a little bit, uh, and before we get into uh, some of the questions of, of why you joined Encompass, but as you, as you look forward, merger and acquisition, growth trends, how do you feel uh, uh, for the industry, uh, its outlook coming out of COVID and, uh, and what are you predicting? Well, it's a great question, especially with the COVID angle, right? Because I think on one of our calls, one of our members uh, said, you know, and, and some people might know Dave Gilbert, he's our evangelist, but he, he said, you know, I think the, uh, I think COVID accelerated uh, our, our whole industry by five years and, you know, and whether it's five years or four years or six years, you know, but I think we saw, you know, members of the CCA, uh, you know, like, like the cloud communications providers and yet they're all the, the ones you would know, whether it be Ring or Vonage or Zoom or whoever, you know, they, they all, all of a sudden, all of these companies who were in offices had to immediately figure out how to become virtual and uh, and uh, kind of create up their their you know cloud communications uh, platform. So the cloud communications companies did very well during COVID, and so it accelerated the growth of most of the companies in the industry. Um, but I think the as it's going forward, what's ha where we're at as far as an industry, I'll give you a few statistics, but. The, uh, the overall industry, even though the, the penetration of the industry really happened 
at the uh, started with the smaller companies, right? As companies saw Ring and Vonage and Eight by Eight and all these companies kind of go after the the kind of the lowest hanging fruit there of companies who could very quickly and easily move to the cloud. Um, the penetration has gotten quite high on call it under you know 10 seats per location is close to 50 percent now but the penetration when you get above that is actually quite low and the overall penetration of the industry is only still about 27 28 percent depending on which analyst you talk to but uh, so there's a long runway ahead and uh, when you still see that there's you know say 73 percent or so of the market still to transition especially those larger customers who had pbx's and are a little bit more complex as far as the transition. They have not yet moved to the cloud. Uh, you know, that's a long, a long runway and a lot of businesses still to move to the cloud. And so from the M&A standpoint, I think you have a lot of companies who are really good at this and experts at this, but they may not be the biggest companies in the industry. Some are, but uh, there's a lot of very large Lex and CLEX and other providers out there who would like to move to the cloud. And, uh, and so there's a lot of acquisition activity happening where people look at it as a build versus buy and is it quicker to just you know buy a partner and uh and help my customers move to the cloud versus uh build it from scratch that's you know that's an amazing statistic that really only 27 percent penetration um so there is a lot of upside a lot of growth and i do think that covid has accelerated the adoption and the use and and so uh, your member companies and 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 our member companies at Encompass really have um, an optimistic view of the of the future for our member companies, both on the infrastructure side and and on the cloud uh, communication platforms. So that gets me to my next uh, uh, question: Why did you uh, join Encompass as an affiliate member? And as we look at trying to influence major policies before Congress right now with a new administration, new Congress at the FCC. How did your interests align with Encompass and why did you join as an affiliate member? Well, you know, we, we watched Encompass from the early days from CompTEL to Encompass and all the, you know, all the evolution you've been through and you've been a leader the whole time, right? I mean, every, everyone knows those names and everyone knows those events. Everyone feels like they're a, they are a half to attend really uh, to, if you're, if you're somebody or want to be somebody, you know, you need to be part of that. So, but we've also seen, you know, as, as this evolution has happened, uh, you know, your members have changed, like our members have changed and, and they're all looking more and more similar to where they're very complimentary. And I think you have a, a tremendous voice at Encompass with, uh, you know, both the FCC and Congress on all the regulatory issues and regulatory is a big, um, a big uh, kind of part of what we do and a big differentiator for us as well uh, for our members. And I know we, we have a regulatory committee that's headed up by uh, Marky Anuzi and uh, Michael Pryor and uh, a lot of great folks who've done some great work. And they, they really uh, looked for an opportunity to amplify our voice uh, by joining with the Compass because we know how how far along you are in that area and, uh, and what a tremendous, uh, I think, respect you have from those key regulatory bodies that we thought uh, there's something here very synergistic and, uh, and powerful if we, we align, especially I think since so many of our initiatives are aligned uh, that we're, you know, that we look to advance both for our industries and our members. Now it is, um, it's, it's hard to believe, and as I look at your career, which has really spanned, as, as I mentioned in the introduction, every network, every stage of, of competition and all the different services. This year, Encompass celebrates our 40th anniversary. Mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to believe starting in 1981 at the edge of the long distance competition. And then as we became the champion for local competition and competition across all networks and, and, and what became uh, platforms in the technology and cloud space. And as, as you look at fiber and, and, and wired and wireless and, and, and cloud-based uh, uh, competition now, it does give us a tremendous uh, opportunity. We wanted to look back uh, over where we've been and to celebrate, but now to look forward. Uh, we recently have, have been collaborating with CCA 
on a filing before the FCC on call authentic uh, authentication. Tell us a little bit of, of your policy priorities, things that are important to you uh, on the policy front and that we're working together on. Yeah, I think, and it's been great working with Encompass so far. I mean, we really feel like uh, you've been helpful to our initiatives and hopefully we've added value to, you know, this uh, show kind of a, another partner who's out there who's very interested in some of these uh, common and, and initiatives. But I think at a high level, you know, we, we, most of our providers focus on the communications and the content side from the cloud, and we actually rely on a lot of the Encompass providers for delivering those services to our end users and, uh, and doing it in a high quality way that uh, end users can have confidence in. And so we, we, although we provide a lot of our services over the top of our partners like Encompass members, um, you know, we look for the same unfettered, non-discriminatory access that uh, we know you fight for, you know, for competition and be able to, to make sure access is available to everyone in a non-discriminatory way. And so we really, at a high level, you know, we fight for those initiatives and authentication, you know, when you take, uh, for example, the whole stir shaken initiative and uh, the regulatory, uh, you know, issues revolving that, um, everybody wants to eliminate fraudulent robocalls, right? There's nothing more annoying than that. Uh, and I know it was actually driven home. I, I'm from Las Vegas originally. And I was visiting my 85 year old mom in Las Vegas at her home there. And um, she, she's fortunately able to live, live on her own there, but she calls kept, her phone kept ringing and she'd pick it up, you know, still had a landline phone there and I'd look at the call ID. And if it wasn't someone's that she knew the ID, she said she doesn't answer because she gets too many calls from people that are trying to, you know, rip her off. And uh, I thought that's sad, right? I mean, we have to create a, uh, communications tool that my mom can answer every time no and it's it's not someone trying to steal something from her right and uh, and so everyone wants to eliminate robocalls but at the same time we know how complex that is and how you can't do that and and uh, take the risk of also um, blocking legitimate calls from legitimate people who uh, who you would want to talk to and so I think there lies the, the, you know, the, the issues. And I think some of the things we're both trying to work on is how do we, how do we eliminate the bad and not throw out the good with it and uh, create technology around uh, that kind of intelligence in the network. Yeah. Well, it is, it's been very helpful to encompass in our advocacy to have your members join with us on something that is very, very critical. We're not only trying to promote competition across all networks and platforms. But we're also trying to create trust and transparency and security so that the, the market flourishes and serves you know, everyone in a good way. And, and so trying to find the right balance on something like stir shake and, and robocalls and call uh, authentication is, is something that we're very glad we've been able to partner with you uh, to do. Uh, to hopefully get the right balance before the FCC. Yeah. And, and that brings me to the, to the next question, uh, which is not only do we advocate together, but uh, we, we provide uh, an, uh, a community and venues and opportunities like with our annual industry show for business to business relationships. Uh, for, for your business, you, for your members and for CCA, to have a platform to get your message out uh, of who you are, what you're doing, who you're providing service to. So talk a little bit about the business to business relationships and those types of partnerships that Encompass represents for you. Well, as I looked at all of the Encompass members, right? I mean, you have just a, a great list of members. I look at, uh, you know, from some of the biggest names in the world, right? Let alone just communications companies, but the you know, biggest names in the world and whether they be access providers or cloud providers or content providers. I mean, you have just a tremendous uh, list of, of uh, members there. And I think with such a, a huge migration to the cloud, um, you know, it, it just makes sense in that, uh, there, you know, everyone is essentially looking at how, how do I get go to the cloud? Even if uh, you know some calls I was on this morning, I don't 
I don't know if they even understood what the cloud really was, uh, but they knew they needed to get there, right? It was, uh, it's, it's where you got to go. And so I think uh, more and more services are going to be held in the cloud. I, when we first started the cloud communications, like you said, shipped like, you know, 13 years ago or so, it was surprising that, you know, one of our, our founding members actually had the, uh, went out and got the uh, domain for cloudcommunications.com because nobody else had it, right? And uh, it was it was available. So, uh, uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm wondering what he he was able to sell that for. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, we use it now, you know, fortunately because it's uh, it's our main domain now. But yeah, it's you know, it was just not um, you know. I remember you know having to convince people to trust us that we can take care of your services better in the cloud than you can by having that big box in your closet with all those blinking lights and a person babysitting it, you know, 24 seven, we, you know, trust us, we can do that. Now I think most people know they can trust the cloud, everything from their banking to their dating is in the cloud and, uh, and they know they can, uh, they can trust it. And, uh, and so with that huge migration of the cloud and with all the, the huge um, members that you have really uh, covering the whole breadth of total communications, I think it only makes sense that we uh, we have the opportunity to at least be on each other's radar and, and, and have our members help each other out because I think it's an ancestrious industry and, uh, and everyone uh, looks for ways to, to, uh, to you know, help advance the, the efforts of the industry. And one final question before we turn it over to any, any questions from our, our audience. As, in, as we begin the working in the, in the first quarter of this year, new, new president, new administration, a new Congress, a new leadership at the FCC, major transformational um, policies are being shaped right now uh, in this uh, new environment. A major investment in infrastructure for the broadband industry, all forms of, of networks, uh, how do we reach a, a new national consensus and commitment coming out of COVID to have universal connectivity, which has a, an indirect benefit, I believe, to all of your members, that uh, if the infrastructure, the broadband infrastructure of the country is robust, secure, fast, high capacity, then uh, your members benefit and the, and the and the customers that they serve, business, enterprise, anchor institutions, healthcare, financial individuals, they also benefit. So talk to us a little bit about what are the, as you go forward, as we go forward together this year, any priorities on the policy front that, that you're watching closely, where, where we could be of assistance and where we could partner in that, uh, in that priority. Thanks. And it's a great question, especially in light of what you mentioned there, Chip, with the uh, the infrastructure potential investment, right, and how that might actually benefit a lot of us in the communication space as, uh, as money becomes available for both metropolitan and rural areas. But I would I would capture our focus in uh, areas of interest really in four four main areas. You know, one is is to really support and drive the proliferation of abundant, unfettered, and non discriminatory uh, broadband access throughout the country, right? Yeah, I, I, really, I, I really like how you just defined that. <laughs> Abundant, uh, unfettered access. Non-discriminatory, non right? We all want it, we want it, you know, and everybody does, right? And they want it, like you said, want it better than it was yesterday, higher quality, uh, want to, you know, it'll be uh, really interesting as our future unfolds here and our kids' future unfolds just what travels over that broadband access, right? I mean, it's just limitless uh, uh, as that capacity grows and the quality of that delivery grows, just what could be um, um, delivered. And, uh, you know, when I started college, there were no cell phones, no internet and uh, no PC. And when I finished college, there was PCs, internet and cell phones and so not that I took a really long time to uh, finish college but it was that's the kind of innovation that just happened once these things became available and I think broadband will be really a, a, a launching pad for so many more so that that you know proliferation of broadband is huge I think the second one I'd say is just the 
you know, uh, um, kind of, you know, closing the digital divide. I think there's still a lot who don't have access that like we'd have them have access. And I know, uh, you know, people like I, I'm, I've worked with in the past with, uh, you know, Craig McCaw and his, his SPAC just bought Astra and uh, a satellite company, right? A lot, there's a lot going on terrestrially as well as, uh, you know, uh, in the skies or on the satellite side. And so I think, you know, there's lots of ways to provide broadband and, uh, and I think having that, uh, having those uh, ways that we can help uh, close this digital divide are important. And then I think, you know, really watching the regulatory front, which you guys are experts at, and because I think sometimes regulatory issues in their best efforts to help can sometimes hinder. And so we have to really just make sure that the right uh, laws are, are passed and issues are passed that uh, help versus hinder. And then I think lastly, just creating a communications platform uh, through our efforts that uh, my 85 year old mom can confide in is one of high quality and non-fraudulent and uh, is able to, uh, to give people a, a communications uh, platform for true that they really uh, can have high confidence in. Well, well, Clark, I, didn't, I don't know if we have any, any questions for the audience, but let me just close us by saying, one, I'm very grateful that, that, y that CCA has joined as an affiliate member to Encompass. Uh, I, I do believe it makes us both stronger and our boys um, uh, uh, more effective uh, as we try to shape the policies of the future. As, as Encompass celebrates our, our 40th anniversary and as we look forward to the next decade of, of what's going to emerge and evolve and, and with our companies and, and the individuals and institutions that they serve. I, I don't think we could be at a better place at a better time in a higher growth potential than where we are today during a time where transformational policies are being made. And so I look forward to partnering with you uh, now and going forward and, and what we can do together and I really, uh, again, thank you for joining Encompass as an affiliate member and, and look forward to, to working with you and seeing you, I hope in person in October at our, at our annual show in Las Vegas at the Cosmopolitan. Absolutely, and I'll, I'll say Chip, we're just delighted to be part of Encompass and uh, work with you in any way we can add value and, uh, and to your points, on this space, there's not a better space to be in. I mean, I, I like you said in the early comments here, I've done a lot of work in a lot of different industries and uh, you know, I can't, I couldn't pick a better one to be in right now as far as this space at this time and uh, the opportunities that will be coming forward here in the, the near and even longer term future, I think are just uh, limitless. So it's, it's great to uh, be in this space and to, to work in any way we can help with a great, uh, great company. and. Uh, partner like Encompass. Well, well, thank you. And CCA is fortunate to have a good leader uh, with your background, your experience. And uh, I wish you the best the coming year and look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. We'll, we'll see each other in person soon, right? And all of us will, which will be exciting. So yeah, very much. Thank you, Clark. All right. Thanks.